Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on July 9th, 2023, recorded on 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. In today's video, we have a lot to talk about, including a tropical cyclone watch for portions of the Atlantic Basin, what's going to be forming out there potentially, and a look at what's ongoing in the Eastern Pacific. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, it is fairly quiet across the basin for now. We notice there's a lot of dry, stable air in the atmosphere, as indicated by these reds and oranges here off the coast of Africa and into the central main development region. Though we do have a fairly healthy tropical wave right now where my cursor is, a flare-up of shower and thunderstorm activity associated with the diurnal maximum period, or the period where convection is most freely able to form in the atmosphere. And this tropical wave will be moving westward and west-northwestward over the next couple of days. And within about the next five or six days or so, maybe a little bit sooner than that, this is going to arrive on the doorstep of the Greater Antilles here from about Barbados, St. Lucia, uh, St. Lucia and the Grenadines, and northward up towards uh, places like uh, Aruba and uh, even into U.S. British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico over the next couple of days. So this will bring some showers and thunderstorm activity to the region, gusty winds, heavy rainfall. And also we're going to be watching these subtropics for potential tropical cyclone activity. So let's go ahead and look at that right now. Taking a look here at the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center, there is an area of interest with 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next week. This is going to be in the subtropical Atlantic, so this poses no significant threat to land at this point in time. But this could definitely become a storm, maybe even a hurricane out here in the subtropical waters at a, as these waters are fairly warm for this time of year and do support a tropical storm or marginal low-end hurricane to form out here in the subtropical Atlantic. And this system will likely move off towards the north and east over the next several days into the next week or so. But again, at this time, there is no threat to land from this potential system. Taking a look here at the tropical wave that is going to be approaching the Lesser Antilles over the next several days. This tropical wave right now is located right here where my cursor is, and it's denoted within an area of relatively dry, stable air. You can see all these like cumuliform clouds out here, and this indicates the presence of dry mid-level air just to the north of our tropical wave. Now, again, it is producing an area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity today, and there is no real indication of a circulation trying to tighten up in here, which is obviously some good news. However, we notice what's going to be happening over the next several days as this tropical wave generally moves off towards the west-northwest. You notice that the cloud tops over here from convection near portions of the USVI and the Greater Antilles is actually moving generally off towards the east-northeast here, or east-southeast rather. And so what this actually indicates is that there's a lot of upper level shear in this area. And as our tropical wave moves into this environment, it is going to encounter that unfavorable environment in terms of the wind shear. And so tropical cyclone formation is not currently anticipated at this time. But again, this area will bring some heavier rainfall and gusty winds to portions of the island chain over the next several days. So please do be prepared for that as we could see some flooding gusty winds up towards 50 or 60 miles per hour and the potential for some flooding rainfall in spots. And in the eastern Pacific Basin, we have a couple of systems that we are watching right now. First of all, we have Invest Area 93E, which is located to the south and west of the Baja Peninsula. And this system has actually failed to organize into a tropical storm over the last couple of days. Again, we first thought that this could develop into a potential hurricane, but this hasn't even developed into a tropical storm or depression yet. And it is running out of time because as you can see here, it is going to be running into the cooler sea surface temperatures right where my cursor is. So this has about a day left to become a tropical cyclone. And right now with there being very little convection near the circulation, it is very unlikely that this is actually going to be able to do so and become anything too strong. 
To the south and east of that, we have another area of disturbed weather located right here where my cursor is. And this system also has a high probability of developing into a tropical cyclone over the next several days. But both of these systems are expected to stay well away and away from any part of coastal Mexico or the Baja Peninsula, which is certainly some good news. Taking a look here at the latest GFS forecast, this is the 060 run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. What we're looking at here is the 850 millibar winds and the geopotential height. You can actually see some reflection of the tropical wave out here in the central part of the main development region, as indicated by some of the turning here in these wind barbs. We're going to be turning our attention towards an upper level trough that is going to be exiting the northeastern United States and Newfoundland in Nova Scotia over the next couple of days. And this area is expected to actually dive off towards the south here. And you notice within just a couple of days, this is valid for Wednesday morning, we start to get an area of lower pressure to form out here and actually some cyclonic turning in the atmosphere. And this is a response because this little impulse of energy is diving southward into more favorable upper level and sea surface temperature environments here. And within just a couple of days then on Thursday, this develops into a subtropical or tropical cyclone and then just kind of meanders around in the subtropical Atlantic. Again, generally the steering flow for the storm is going to be comprised with an upper level blocking pattern towards the north really and not really much steering from the west. So this is going to be kind of just drifting around for several days, slowly moving off towards the north and east, and then eventually getting caught in the upper level flow here within about 10 days or so by next week. So we could be talking about this system for quite a while, but it is very unlikely to threaten any significant land mass at this time. In fact, the latest GFS forecast even keeps us away from the Azor Islands. So we have a while to watch this, but again, generally speaking, this should not be a threat to land, at least as of right now. Taking a look here at the upper level wind environment over the next couple of days. Right now, it is not favorable. And one of the things that this tropical wave in the main development region is going to succumb to over the next couple of days is this big tropical upper trosopheric trough here, or TUT, T-U-T-T -T for short. And this is not King Tut, but uh, this is an upper level pattern in the atmosphere where there's generally an upper level low pressure and there's a lot of vertical shear across this area. And so as the tropical wave generally moves off towards the north and west like that, it is going to encounter this upper level wind shear and begin to fade apart. So this is not likely to develop into anything over the next several days and it's likely to remain the pattern for the time being. But the subtropical system may have a window of favorability to become a tropical cyclone. You notice within a couple of days here, this is Wednesday at two o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time. And there's this little break right here where there's generally kind of this sharp trough axis. And our storm is beginning to move into an alignment that is more favorable for tropical cyclone formation. And so this actually aligns itself with that storm's forward, the storm's northeastern motion aligns with the shear vectors. And this is able to intensify here, getting down into the low 990s and uh, actually breaks sub 990 for at least a brief period of time. So this is a possibility where our storm uh, is able to find an area of intensification during the next about five or six days or so. And again, right now, this is not expected to impact land at all. But we'll be just watching in just in case this decides to get close here to the Azor Islands. But at this time, no threat to land. In the eastern Pacific Basin, over the next couple of days, we're expecting multiple tropical cyclones that could form even into the next week and beyond. We're looking here at the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at roughly 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, we notice kind of just the parade of storms that could be forming in the eastern Pacific Basin over the next couple of days and about the next week or two. Again, none of these systems right now have any direct threat to land. And again, we're still well a ways to see if any of these storms in the longer range do end up forming. But again, as of right now, no threat to land, which is certainly some good news. And so for folks here in coastal Mexico and the Baja Peninsula, it's just a time worth monitoring for now. But again, nothing significantly uh, imminent on the horizon. 
Later down the line, we'll be watching an additional tropical wave that will be moving off the coast of Africa within the next couple of days or so, probably about the next two or three days. This wave is currently located right here off the right side of your screen where my cursor is kind of circling. And this wave will be moving westward over the next several days, emerging off the coast of Africa and then traversing into the main development region. Now, after this time, the MDR is expected to become a little bit more favorable for tropical cyclone formation. And so this tropical wave will be something worth monitoring as we progress throughout the remainder of next week and the week after. Again, nothing super imminent on the horizon, nothing that is really perking up too much, but it is just something to monitor as we will have some upper level favorability in the atmosphere to promote some larger scale rising motion and the potential for more convection out there across the MDR by next week or the week after. So these this tropical wave and subsequent tropical waves will have to be monitored as we start to head in towards a little bit more of the latter part of July as favorability begins to increase across the basin. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless to everyone out there. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.